Okay. So today your first exercise is due on fronter. Uh, you should deliver it there. And um, uh, you should already be uh, looking at the second exercise, which is uh, due on October 21st. And then th for that exercise, you'll be presenting something in lecture. So. <coughs> Um, I'm going to pass around this uh, printout of the exercise and it has a list of certain topics and if you want to work with somebody you can uh, like point an arrow to the topic that you want to work on and then write both of your names next to that. So uh, I know and then I will just assign the other ones that aren't here today. So if you have a preference of who you want to work with or which topic you want to work on, you can choose. So you can do that. <coughs> and if you, if you know somebody else that has a preference, you can write them in as well. Because a, <coughs> I haven't received any emails about it. Okay, um, uh, last time we spoke a bit about chapter 10, but uh, I didn't have any extra notes on that. So I'm going to review that a little bit and then get into chapter 11 today. And uh, we, will <coughs> uh, we will not get to chapter 12, but I'm already including this in the slide set and I might add to that ne for next week. But uh, we're just going to basically go through chapter 10 and 11 and we'll, we'll do an exercise that's associated with chapter 11. Okay, um, <coughs> uh, this uh, whole section of the book is about the process of uh, designing and developing an information architecture. And uh, chapter 10 is about research, chapter 11 is about strategy, Chapter 12 is about design, uh, but uh, the book doesn't spend much time on implementation and administration. So <coughs> we basically will go through the first three steps in the process and not really uh, put much into the last two steps. Um, the goal again of research is to uh, understand where you're coming from, background, the goals, and the business context. And the strategy stage is to develop a high-level framework, which will guide how you actually do the design stage. And then uh, the design stage is to go into deeper detail into the information architecture. And you can use tools such as wireframes and blueprints and metadata schemes and so forth. Uh, we talked about the framework in research as having um, three main areas, and this is the context, the content, and the users. Uh, the context is uh, what you're, the environment which you're building it for. And this has to do with business goals and politics and uh, the resources that are available, human resources and technology resources. And then the content has to do with the stuff that's going to go on your website, for example. <coughs> so this has to do with uh, the data itself plus the metadata, which enables you to access the content. It has to do with the structure of the site navigation schemes, labeling, and so forth. 
And then the users are who you're building it for. And there may be different types of users or stakeholders involved in using the site. In chapter 11, they talk about the weather uh, website, weather channel website. And uh, there's different types of audiences that make use of that website for different reasons. <clears throat> so uh, depending on which group you're designing for, there may be different uh, sub pages or different parts of the website are developed differently. <clears throat> and uh, th this may be also associated with different vocabularies. So uh, understanding the user behaviors and experiences is important, but also there may be different vocabularies that different user groups understand and make use of. Uh, here I go into a little bit more detail about the content. The context, again, is uh, building awareness of the and support for the project. And that means you have to have meetings with key groups. And we talked about uh, that the last time. The content, uh, one of the steps in understanding the content is that you can make use of a heuristic evaluation. Just get the thing. So uh, the heuristic evaluation is an, an external evaluation by experts, and it can be used to analyze the content of the website so that you better understand uh, what types of uh, documents, formats, and this other type of information that you're using. So um, <coughs> they, they say that um, some of the questions that you can ask in uh, this heuristic evaluation are the site should provide multiple ways to access the same information. This is on page 240. Uh, the indexes and the site maps should be employed to supplement the taxonomy. The navigation system should provide users with a sense of context. The site should be consistently use language appropriate for the audience. And searching and browsing should be integrated to reinforce each other. So these are some uh, good principles for a review that, they will, that the reviewer or the experts will look at to see if the website that currently exists uh, addresses these issues. And this has, to, again, to do with the this is pointing towards the formats and the document types and the sources and the subjects and the existing architecture. So these elements uh, deal with that. After doing a, an evaluation uh, <coughs> of the present site, uh, you want to be able to look at uh, samples of the different types of documents and formats and so forth to look for patterns and relationships. And the way you do this is that you can use uh, tools for uh, content mapping. This is like creating a map of your website that allows you to see how different elements link together. And you can also do benchmarking, which will uh, allow you to uh, look at how your uh, site exists today in comparison to uh, maybe competitors that are trying to accomplish the same thing. And then you, or you're just using it as a benchmark of your, yourself today. And then if you make improvements, you can look back and see how you compare to that, uh, to yourself at a different point in time. So it's, it's a way to evaluate if you're making progress in, in terms of the criteria that you set for yourself. And those are the benchmarks. So this is all looking at the content, researching uh, the present content of the site. And then <coughs> the users, uh, you need to find out what is it that they want. And the book recommends that you do a lot of testing. But the way of finding out what the users want, there's different methods. You can use uh, statistics that may be collected 
uh, from uh, geographic information or social demographic information that's available for a particular region or it may be collected from use of the existing web page and you can uh, do an analysis of the data that's been automatically collected uh, from the web page for example you can look at customer support data you can do surveys or focus groups uh, and you can also do field studies but these are these are all uh, kind of surveying techniques getting information from the users themselves and sometimes <coughs> the users don't uh, actually they may say what they want but they may not actually know what they want so some people say that you need to combine this objective st statistics collection uh, with the subjective uh, data. So the subjective data coming from the users, and it may be that you're, you're uh, screening out biases, uh, but there may be some biases that are not being screened out, and they may not know exactly what they want. So it's, a, it's good to combine techniques and one technique that is suggested is card sorting <coughs> and uh, we will go back to this in chapter 11 uh, with an example <coughs> so <coughs> this is uh, what i put on the board last time also we have um, <coughs> different types of um, tools and methods for collecting information about the context, the content, and the users. Uh, so background research has to do with, um, uh, you take uh, materials that might belong to the organization and identify what is the vision of the organization. Uh, presentation and meetings, uh, this is what we were talking about, that you need to uh, make sure that everybody understands what the purpose of the design is going to be and you need to talk with the strategy team those that are responsible for creating content and those who are responsible for the technology so you might have different meetings with different groups uh, so this would be the IT people that may be responsible for them maintaining the databases uh, the content team might be the sales group that is creating uh, the information on the products so there's there's different groups that you need to talk to Stakeholder interviews, uh, this has to do with maybe it's not the, de the development team, although sometimes some of the development team can also be users, but we want to do a user assessment of what they think about uh, the content now and in the future. And gap analysis has to do with uh, does the technology support our needs? And if not, what do we need to do to change the technology? Heuristic evaluation, we, that was what we were just talking about. Uh, the experts evaluate the, the current content. It's an external evaluation. And then the metadata and content analysis. <coughs> this is looking at not only the, the data for the site, but also the data that's used to access the data, the uh, types of um, fields that are used to search on and so forth. So. Um, this is a separate analysis from the content itself. And then the content mapping is uh, mapping out the different chunks of data, where the data is placed and by who it's used. And then benchmarking again is uh, looking at what exists today in com so that we can look at changes later on and also compare it with others, uh, maybe competitor websites. And then the users uh, using search logs and clickstream analysis. This is collecting data automatically from the website using case information, contextual inquiries. These are different types of uh, interviews, viewing processes. Okay. So <coughs> and then we will start on chapter 11 and this is mainly what we want to discuss today uh, strategy is the second part of this process after research it's the bridge between research and design 
and uh, so design being the third stage. And the, the authors say that this isn't, even though it sounds very linear and straightforward, it can be a difficult step. So <coughs> the idea is to develop a high level conceptual framework for structuring and organizing the website. And based on this framework, you'll build on this and uh, fill in the framework later in the design phase. Um, so the key ingredients for a strategy have to do with administration, technology, integration, and emphasis. And also there's other uh, elements. But the administration is, um, <coughs> uh, this has to do with uh, the organization. Who, how is it going to be maintained? Uh, how will new information be added? And what am I going to, um, what am I doing uh, that I'm going to work, who's going to work with what, and so forth. And the technology integration has to do with um, understanding what tools you already have and already are using that you can still use in the new system because you're not going to just go with a clean slate, you're going to be using some existing uh, content, some existing structure already that you've identified that works and some things are going to be changed. But there has to be a different type of, the, of integration. And the emphasis is, is it going to be top down or bottom up and this usually has to do with the other, other elements like labeling and organization. Um, so uh, top down is the uh, use of the primary hierarchy so if you have um, uh, the uh, global navigation uh, scheme and you've identified the main areas for your website, this is the top-down approach to being able to locate this information. The bottom-up approach might go into how, you know, more into the creation phase. So how are documents and objects uh, going to be used and how are they going to be authored and created and managed. So uh, maybe if you have users adding content to the website, if it's coming from other places, not just from the centralized control, then you have to know how is, does, does this get added to the web page? Where does it get web added to the web page? And uh, how do you integrate that with the top-down scheme? So it's not just one or the other, it's usually a combination of both. So you have some things that are organized from the central administration and then other things are created at the end users and have to be integrated into the site. Um, where this is um, labeling and organization is usually part of this top-down uh, primary hierarchy. It's decided on using techniques like card sorting to, to decide how this uh, organization will work and then document type identification I should have made this dark just like the rest of this uh, this is uh, the bottom-up scheme so this is trying to identify uh, which documents are going to uh, fit into different uh, organizations so this these uh, two steps document type identification and labeling an organization have to do with this emphasis and labeling an organization is here and the document type organization is here. And then uh, the, the, you have to decide on your meta fields definitions. Uh, what fields will I use? How are they defined? Are they global or specific regions? Um, let's see, let me look at this. Okay, um, when you decide on the, on the different types of uh, metadata fields, if it is uh, a global field, if it's a global uh, metadata field, <coughs> then it's something that's applied to uh, every uh, document on a website. So it means it will be applied everywhere if you have a 
document that's located on several subpages in the website, it's going to use the same metadata fields. And that's what they mean by a, a global uh, metadata definition. If it's specific or local to regions, it may be used only on a subsection of the site and have a specific meaning for that subsection of the site. Okay. <coughs> yes. So then that, that was the main point I wanted to get on that page. Okay. Okay, um, so how do you proceed with strategy uh, development? They suggest an approach that's called uh, TACT. And TACT is uh, think, articulate, communicate, and test. So the thinking uh, stage is where you convert your research data to creative ideas. And this is something that's usually done internally between uh, how people think themselves. And when people think uh, this is uh, intrinsic to them and they need to somehow make this knowledge or information extrinsic and available to others. So when the information goes from yourself and they say that some people think better alone, some people may think in, in groups. But this is really where you're supposed to uh, analyze your research data and try to create ideas for your, for your development. And then the articulate uh, is to um, the next stage when you want to use uh, tools like uh, diagrams or metaphors or stories or wireframes to explain your idea. And this is when you actually should be, uh, you can work with small groups. They recommend not very large groups at this point, but to start to put these uh, ideas into, uh, into some sort of a loose framework. And then uh, communicate is to, when you're actually starting this process of getting buy-in, people trying, trying to get them to uh, accept your ideas for how it's going to be laid out. And um, uh, so they suggest that you communicate um, uh, all you often with your ideas and to the enough people. And then uh, the test is, uh, you need to look at how these uh, ideas are being <coughs> accepted and if people think that certain things should be changed. And this is supposed to be an iterative process, so you go through this in several cycles. Uh, this is the, the strategy phase deliverables. What should come out of this process is that you should be writing a strategy report and this is a detailed strategy that has direction and scope. And you have the strategy presentation, which is kind of the strategy report, only you're, you're presenting this verbally to different groups of people. So you're actually uh, doing things like articulating and communicating in both of these. And also the project plan for design. And this is intended to uh, present schedules and budgets and, and uh, deliverables to kind of guide how the process will go forward to the design phase. And um, here they recommend that you use a card uh, sorting closed technique to test ideas. And um, the um, you might have other types of techniques that um, you can create pr um, prototypes that can be tested. So sort of uh, mini versions of how the website might look and then that can be tested on groups. But uh, you can also use these uh, simpler techniques. And what I thought we could do now uh, before uh, the break is done is to try this uh, uh, card uh, sorting close technique and uh, what I want you to do is to let me just break out of this for a second mm. okay
Okay, so um, chapter 10 on page 255 describes the card sorting technique. And the card sorting technique says that uh, you should label a bunch of index cards with headings from categories and subcategories and content within your website. And you can make maybe 20 or 25 of these cards. And then you should number each of the cards. So there's a diagram on page 255, which shows an example of uh, index cards that have different labels on them. And then what you should do is, for a closed card sorting technique, is that you should write uh, categories on post-its, as many categories as you think necessary. And you have these, these uh, also these cards, which have to do with, um, we're going to use paper. So, um, I'm going to hand around paper, but I'll show you. So we will have, each group will have, um, we'll have two groups and each group will have uh, paper and post-its. And the paper are some of the elements from a website and the post-its are going to be the main categories. And what you're going to do is you're going to write main categories and some of the information that you think should go in these categories, like sub subcategories. And then uh, you will write them down for a particular website and you'll hand them to the other group and you'll ask them to place them in the categories, that the subcategories that they should go into the main categories that you think they should go in. And that is closed card sorting, which is described on the next page. It says, uh, closed card sorts in which users rely on your predefined labels to question or validate a prototype information architecture. So you're creating uh, the information in predefined labels, and then you're going to give it to the other team to match the two. And I want one team is going to do this for the unsought employee web page and the other group is going to do it for the student web page. So first one group will pick out main categories and information that belongs under the main categories. And then um, <coughs> they will, when we're done, when I say done, then you will give this this information to the other team and they will they will mat do the matching and then the other team will do the same for the student uh, web page and give it to the the first team so I will give I'll say that uh, you guys at this table are one group and then you can be the other group and I will give each Group and uh, the ones at this table can be the onset web page. You will create the labels and content for that, and then you'll do the student web page. So uh, you can decide the number of categories that you need, give you more, and the number of and the amount of information underneath. Okay, you probably have to use a few pages. It's best if you break these up into smaller pieces. <laughs> so you can have um, like 10 minutes to work on this. So 
one is the unsat web page and the other is the student web page you have to look at the pages and if you want an explanation about card sorting you look at page 255 that's where you'll see it Okay, I'm gonna call the six while we're working here. 